Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTheTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. As everybody knows, uh, the stock market gets most aggressive after hours. I'm obviously joking. We'll get to that uh, in a second. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, we uh, welcome you aboard. We thank you very much for your viewership. If you could be so kind, uh, like, uh, share, subscribe, and come aboard. Uh, on this journey to longevity with a non-biased uh, approach. So let's talk about it. So yesterday kicked off uh, a two-day meeting. I apologize, there was no video yesterday. I had to take care of some uh, last-minute errands that had to, well, be taken care of. So there was, no, uh, there was no time, especially with my kid's schedule. So I apologize for that. But we are here today. So yesterday kicked off a, a two-day session. Uh, obviously, that capped off with the 2 o'clock um, Fed announcement on interest rates, followed by uh, Chairman Jerome Powell's comments, the Q&A, and the whole kib and caboodle. So we knew kind of going into today's session, there was a chance that the market was going to give us a very, very slow session. Because again, who's going to really start getting aggressive ahead of ahead of the Fed? And we we got that. If if you look at the cues, uh, if you look at the cues throughout the day. Before Powell came on, they did absolutely nothing, like literally nothing, right? We went literally sideways the whole day. You can just see it. The whole day we went sideways. And then finally, Powell came on, uh, 25 basis point hike. That really wasn't a surprise. That's what the street uh, was anticipating. Um, they also, you know, he also started giving a little bit of hints that, hey, there maybe is a light at the end of the tunnel and hinted on certain fronts, at least that the language uh, started playing out, that there actually you know, could be a scenario uh, that they start putting an end to hikes maybe as early uh, as the next meeting. We don't know by now. But the, the key was the market did nothing as far as the market as the market went. Uh, Powell was commenting that he was looking for and his goal was 2% inflation. We'll see with that. Good luck with that. But again, the market did absolutely nothing. And finally, you know, the market started jolting, going up, going down, going up, going down. You could see it, big spikes up, big spikes down. And then all of a sudden we had a, you know, pretty aggressive sell off into the close. And if you look at the surface, it really wasn't that bad, right? It really wasn't that bad because if you look at the formation on the queues, they're still way above the 50, the, above the 20 day moving average, but they did lose the five day. Here's where things got spicy, right? And if you sat there like me, Throughout the day, I was just literally watching pain dry. I, I did not put on one thing in the, it, like literally one thing in for six, nearly six hours of the day. And then finally, we, we started looking at some banks. We started talking about some banks uh, the other day with Key, Key, Por, Key Corp, uh, with HBAN, uh, everything, everybody knows the whole fiasco, what happened with FRC. Everybody knows what happened with PAG dubbing for the last couple of days. But it's the shoe that dropped after the close and Pag W, uh, they came out and they basically had a PR that said that um, they are open for sale. Hell, at this point, they're, they're, you know, they're open for a cup of coffee and the market did not like that. That means, again, that's a sign of being desperate, right? Uh, that's not a sign into strength. That's a sign into weakness, yada, yada, yada. Pag W is down uh, more than 50%. Uh, after the close. And if you guys remember yesterday's session, yesterday's session was driven because of bank fears, right? More bank failures. Well, we got that, you know, we got that another shoe to drop uh, after the close again today. Everything is getting slammed. Like literally everything is getting slammed uh, in the banking space. Uh, there's a couple of banks we'll show you guys. Uh, finally got something, finally got something towards the end of the day. Obviously the uh, PAC, uh, PAC W uh, announcement at helping, you know, helping a lot of our friends, wink, wink. Uh, but more important is it does look like it wants to set the tone. If you look at the cues uh, after the close, right? If you look at the cues after the close, you know, they're down, right? They're down. They're not getting slaughtered, you know, because again, it's not about, you know, it's not about technology when it comes to the banks. But again, they're, they're going to uh, feel sort of the effects. 
the key is what happens tomorrow, right? And again, you're going to see a lot of pressure, at least initially on the SPYs. Right before the recording, I was looking at this level. I go, well, they held this uh, 40780 level three times. If you look after the close, right, we are, you know, we're down a dollar below. So it's going to be very interesting to see if the bulls can continue to buy the dips. I mean, the buy the dip theory has been alive and kicking now, you know, since the January 11th remount uh, of the 50 day moving average and pretty much all the indexes. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the bulls hold to, you know, try to defend this 405 level. Everybody see this 405 level, guys? That's where we stopped last time. Uh, that's where we stopped last time on the 50 day EMA, right? So now this 405 area is going to be super important for tomorrow. So that's the line in the sand for the bulls, right? If the bulls can't defend uh, that 405 level, then we're going to go down to the 50 day. Uh, at the 50 day uh, SMA around 403. So it's going to be a very, very uh, interesting open tomorrow uh, for the Bulls. Can they defend the 405 level? Uh, for the Qs, you know, you're going to see uh, what's going to happen here in the 16 level. That's kind of where the Qs are trading right now uh, after hours. If you look at after hours, they're trading at this 316 level. That is correlating to the 20 day moving average. So for the SP, uh, for the spies, they have to hold. Uh, they, they, they're they going to have to hold 405 or not. Tomorrow we have a different conversation. Uh, the Qs, they have to hold this 316 level uh, that's going to spill over into tomorrow's session or there's going to be uh, more selling that's going to come by. Right now, uh, it's all about the banks, the jitters. Um, it, the, the jitters, I, I think the interest rate story is obviously a big deal, at least some sort of trying to get a little bit of closure uh, today for the for at least the bulls and the bears to kind of lead for tangible you know, tangible uh, headlines instead of the what ifs that we've been kind of tackling since the last year, year and a half or so. So a little bit of closure would be wonderful, but it's very, very important that spies hold at 405 uh cues hold the 316 because if not you're going to start seeing a lot of breakdowns uh for tomorrow's session let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow uh before we go into the pivots watch netflix for tomorrow right if the cues start breaking down watch the earnings low here on netflix if netflix starts losing the earnings low uh this thing can get hit so definitely definitely uh keep an eye on netflix uh amd i uh, had you know crappy earnings it stopped at uh rising support is there a you know is there a day two uh, for selling for AMD? Well, again, that kind of correlates into the 60 day move, 60 uh, rising 60 minute and uh, daily uh, support on the queues. If the queues start losing that 16, AMD is going to get hit as well. Again, it's, as far as I understand, it's still a part of the Nasdaq 100. Um, you got names like uh, let's see here. You got names like let me just give you a couple of more uh, names. Uh, NET broke down today. They came out with earnings. A couple of days ago, they blew out at earnings. They stopped at the linear regression line. NET starts losing today's channel tomorrow. You, look, there's a lot of room all the way down. So this is the, it's in the cloud space. So everything is correlating. If the queues break down, everything you're going to see stocks starting to set up one by one by one. And the last thing you're going to want to do is if they if if both the spies and the queues start losing support, the last thing you're going to want to do is try to, you know, catch, try to catch a falling knife because there's going to be room. So very, very important uh, outing tomorrow uh, for the bulls, for the bears, and sees who has control. If the bulls uh, want to survive, they're going to need to sit there and reclaim, you know, reclaim that 316 level of, on the queues and obviously defend uh, 405 uh, for uh, the spy. So let's talk about the day, right? It was really slow man when i'm talking about really slow i mean really really slow was watching tesla it didn't break it didn't break to the downside it didn't break to the upside here's the one that finally got hit we started talking about this key a couple of days ago guys they were coming in for aggressive put buyers were coming in for the may the june expiration for the seven eights and nines it finally cracked right at the close it finally cracked at the close closed below this 957 area and now the stock is at 890 congratulations to all you guys who sat there all day with me and say oh my god let's wait let's wait let's wait we talked about this thing non-stop they finally cracked it into the close and here it is after the close trading under nine dollars if this thing could get to eight and a half eight dollars tomorrow would be absolutely wonderful again make sure guys for all you guys who are watching this take some covers obviously after hours especially if you're in equity uh, and then keep a runner for tomorrow for a potential another move. Again, HBAN, another bank 
uh, 994. There was a sneakier pivot to the upside, uh, to, to the downside. Uh, Kane gave it to us around 1007. That's where it closed. But H band is getting is getting hit as well. Trend 960s. Uh, NET. I missed this thing at the open. It just wasn't wasn't my my thing. But uh, 4, 4270 for bills below can flush broke earnings lows. It did flush, but it was right at the open. It was very very thin. So I didn't get a piece of that. But if like I said, if this thing went down a dollar, if this thing starts losing tomorrow's channel, today's channel tomorrow, it's going to get hit more as well. And uh, nothing on IDYA, nothing on AUPH, nothing on ABN, Airbnb. We're still watching Netflix. Uh, Meta went up about you know, 50, 60 cents before the Fed. Nothing there. It was literally a dead day uh, until, and you can see here, Tesla never got close to uh, the 166 level. Oh, here it is right here. So H-band 1007 and 994 macro level, $7 June put buyers came in today. It closed below the 1007. Now the stock is trading 960s for all you guys who got that as well. Uh, great job as well. So again, another day, another looks like another bank failure. Uh, you know, again, is this, you know, is this something that we just have to learn to uh, to live with? You know, we'll see. We'll see. But the one thing that you have to remain, of, you know, very, very vigilant, you don't buy dips in these banks. Okay, don't. If you're doing it for a day trade, that's cool, whatever. Uh, but don't, you know, again, especially when you when you see the formula, and this has been the formula, if you guys remember, a couple of days ago when PacW was uh, at 960s, right? That first pivot below 955, right? They were coming for the nine, eight and a half, seven dollar puts, and the stock went to six and a half. Today, this thing cracked more, and now the stock is, at, you know, trading in the twos, right? So be very, very wary of any banks, especially with option flow, but those are the best bets. Uh, to the downside again key breaking down finally h man for all you guys h man i didn't get uh key was is uh so far so good but all in all guys have a great night everybody stay safe it really does it really does prove a point that we sat there all day nothing confirmed we didn't try to you know try to find trades that weren't there we just sat there waited for value and like i said when i started the, the you know tonight's update everybody knows the biggest value is after the close obviously i'm being sarcastic have a great night everybody god bless and let's see what we got for tomorrow take care everybody